So they say time flies like an arrow. Well, I'm here to tell you that fruit flies like a banana. Get it? It's a fruit and it's sweet and they like it. All right, guys, welcome to Target Practice Part 2. Now, if you haven't done Part 1, there's a link right here. Do that, get all set up, and then we'll see you back here. Now, if you're all set up, have done Part 1, in this tutorial, we're going to program the stage, the start button, the archer, as well as the target. Now, our program is event-driven, and there's three events that's going to drive this program. Number one is the flag click. Number two is the start. When we click the start button, the game will start. And the third event is when we time out. The game will last 60 seconds. After that 60 seconds is up, we will end the game. Okay, guys, so the first thing we're going to do is program our stage. Again, driven by three events. The first event is the flag click. When the flag is clicked, we will have our start or splash screen. On that screen is our start button. When that is pressed, we will start our game and therefore have our game stage or our game background. The game will last 60 seconds. As that game counts down to zero, our third event will be triggered and we will have our game over screen. So I click on the stage. I know I'm there because I got the blue border around it. Now, as we talked earlier, our program is going to be controlled by three events. The flag click, the start button, and the end of the game. So let's go to scripts, let's click on events, and let's set up those three events. So the first event is the flag click, so let's grab that. The next event is when we receive the start message. So third from the bottom, it says when I receive. Now we haven't used the start message, so we must create it. So from the drop down, new message, start. S-T-A-R-T, -T. okay, and the third event is going to be the end message, so grab the same block, when I receive, and again we need to create it because we have not used it, so it's a new message, and that message is end, E-N-D. So those are our three events that are going to drive this game. Now when, what do we want to happen with the backdrops? We simply want them to change to the appropriate backdrop. So go to looks. When the flag is clicked, we want the backdrop to be the splash or start screen. When the start button is clicked, that's when we want to switch to our game background. So click game. And when the end message is received, we want our backdrop to switch to the end backdrop. And we have now programmed the stage, and that's all that needs to be done. The next thing we're going to program is our start button. Now, the start button is a little different because it actually triggers the second event. So when the flag is clicked, we simply want our start button to appear or show. When the start button is clicked, we will then trigger our second event that will start the game, and then we want our button to hide. And when our third event happens, we want our button to stay hidden so we don't need to worry about it. So let's take care of that. The next thing we're gonna do is program our start button. So click on start button. Once again, I know I'm there because I have the blue border around it. And also on the upper right hand side of your screen, you actually see the start button. So the start button is a little bit different because it's actually going to trigger the second event. So let's go to events. Now the first event is the flag click, and when the flag is clicked, we want to be able to see our start button. So go to looks and get show. Now since our start button is going to be a button that causes the second event under events, we're going to use the third block down that says when this sprite clicked, and that's what's going to make it a button. So let's get that block out. And there's two things we want our start button to do. Number one, we want it to start the game. So in order for it to start the game, 
it is going to broadcast start. So second block from the bottom, it says broadcast, but not end. We want it to broadcast start. And once it has started the game, we want it to hide. So go back to looks and get hide. Now when the third event happens, the game ends, we want our start button to remain hidden. So we really don't need to program that because it's hidden already. So there we are, we're done with our start button. The next thing we're gonna do is program our archer. Now our archer really doesn't do anything but stay in one place. So we're gonna actually make him a little smaller and position him. We're gonna hide him during the first event, show him while the game is playing, and then for our third event, we're going to move him to the center of the screen so he can, in a speech bubble, display our score. So let's go to events and grab the three events we need. The flag click, the when I receive start, and then when I receive end. So when the flag is clicked, we want our archer simply to hide. So go to looks and grab the hide block. We're also going to initiate the archer. That is to say, we're gonna move him to the left of the screen, centered vertically, and we're going to resize him. So we're still in looks, so go down towards the bottom, it says set size. So we're going to set the size to 50% to make him half the size he is right now. And we need to move him into position. So go to your motion block and we're gonna get the go to X, Y. Now we want him to stay at Y zero because zero is vertically centered. But we want him to move all the way to the left of our screen, so that means our X needs to be negative. And in this case, we're gonna change our, our X value to negative 210. Now when the game begins, we want to see the archer. So go back to looks, and we're gonna show the archer. Now for our third event, when the game ends, we want to use our archer to display the score so the first thing we're going to do is under looks we're going to make him 100 percent so we're going to use the set size block and set him to 100 percent and then we're going to position him towards the bottom but in the center so go to motion we're going to get our go to x y now this time we want to be centered horizontally, so our X value needs to be zero, and we wanna move him towards the bottom third of the screen, so we're going to set our Y to a negative value, and we're gonna make the Y value negative 100. The last thing we wanna do is have him display our score, and for this, we're going to use a speech bubble and a join command. So go to looks, Grab the say command. Under operators, we're going to grab the join command. Now in the first section of the join command, we're going to type the first part of our sentence. So click in there, and the first part of our sentence is, your score is, then put a space, and then we're going to get the score. Now, if you remember in the first video, we created a variable called score that's going to hold that value. So go to data and grab that score variable and stick it in the second part of the join command. And now our sprite, when the game is over, will resize, move to the center bottom of the screen and tell us what our score is in the form of a speech bubble. And the last thing we're gonna to program today is the target. And the target, once again, will be hidden during the first event. We don't need to see it until the game is being played. When the game is played, we're going to show it. 
and it's going to be bouncing up and down from top to bottom on the right hand of our screen. Once the game is over, we're going to hide it so we don't see it anymore. So let's get that taken care of. What do you say? So let's click on the target sprite. Once again, you know you're there because you got the blue border around it as well as it appearing in the upper right hand corner. Now for the target sprite, we're going to use a little shortcut I'm going to talk about in a second. And we're going to also use the glide command to have it glide up and down the right side of our screen. So let's go to events and get the three events we're going to need. The flag click, the win receive start, and win receive end. Now when the flag is clicked, we don't want to see our target. So go under looks, and we're going to hide the target. But we're also going to initiate the target when the flag is clicked. And here's where we're going to use our shortcut. So if I go to motion and I grab the target with my mouse, you will see that the X and Y coordinates within the blocks change to reflect its current position. And we're going to use this to help us out. So grab your target and move it all the way up to the upper right hand corner of your screen. That's where we want our target to start. So at this point, grab the go to and stick it under the hide. So that's where our target's going to start. Now, our target is then going to glide down to the bottom, and then we want it to glide back up to where it is now. So grab the glide command and move it into your work area. Now we're going to use the same trick. Take the target block and slide it all the way down to the bottom of your screen. That's where we want it to glide to. So once again, grab the glide and stick it on top of the glide that you've already created. Now we want this to happen the whole time the game is played. So if we want something to happen the whole time a game is running, that tells us we need to use a forever loop. So go on to control and grab a forever loop. Now we're going to attach that to our win flag clicked script. So when the start button is pressed, at this point we want to be able to see the target so we can shoot at it. So go to looks and grab show. And when the game ends, we want our target to disappear. So let's grab the hide. All right, guys, so now we have programmed our stage, our archer, our target, and our start button. All right, so we're well on the way to completing our game. In our next video, we're going to program the arrow where most of the work is done. So as always, like what you like, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.